What's happening everyone? Steve here, Cars with Steve, and today we are taking a look at the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport Badlands Edition. This is going to be the full walk around. Going to be going over everything, all of the features, all the benefits, every little piece of technology. If you're looking for more of the Coles Notes version, check down in the description below for that 10-15 minute video explaining all of the basics of the vehicle instead. Before we dive right into it, I want to thank you guys as always for all the support you're giving the channel. If you have any questions, make sure you drop it down in the comments section below. But without further ado, let's get right into it and let's take a look and see what the 2021 Bronco Sport has to offer. Taking a peek, look at this key fob. We've got that Bronco Sport, really, really nice look to it. This is the front of the fob itself. Now, this is the Badlands edition of the vehicle. So we've got a few things that are gonna come standard. We've got our unlock button, our lock button, remote start, our trunk release button, as well as our horn or a panic alarm. Now, for whatever reason you ever lock yourself out of the vehicle, there is an emergency access key for us to get inside. In order to remote start the vehicle, it's very straightforward. We're just gonna press the lock button once and the circle button twice. Canceling the remote start is a simple process as well. We just press that circle button once. When it comes down to it, the Bronco Sport does have the ability to get a factory towing option, and I absolutely recommend getting that. There's a couple different reasons why. Reason number one is because you are physically welded to the frame at that point, which means that the Bronco Sport is gonna give you the ability to tow up to 2,000 pounds. Now on top of that, the Badlands Edition has the blind spot system. So when you've got that tow package from the factory, the blind spot system, you can enter the dimensions of your trailer in, and that's going to not only cover the blind spot for the vehicle, but it's going to extend back and give you coverage for the trailer on top of that. Filling up with gas in the Bronco Sport is also a very straightforward process. Minimum manufacturer's recommendation is just 87 octane, so your regular gas, which means you don't need to put a premium fuel inside of this thing in order to run it. Now, there is a little bit of a caveat to that. If you do use a higher octane, so that 91 specifically, you will notice slightly better performance, but it's not a necessity. In order to fill up very straightforward along our driver's side, we're just going to press in the back, open it up, and it is a capless system. So you're just gonna insert the hose. Once you're done, pull it out, click, click it back into place, and you're set to go. Now, when it comes down to the Bronco Sport, there is technically two different engine choices that are available. However, for the Badlands, there is only one, and that's going to be the same for the other models. So you can only get the 1.5 model in the lower trim levels. The two liter turbo engine that comes inside of this thing is strictly available in the Badlands. When it comes down to power, the two liter EcoBoost is able to push out 250 horsepower and 277 foot pounds of torque. Let's take a quick peek under the hood for a second there. So we've got easy access to fill out a couple fluids. We've got our windshield washer fluid there. Easily check our oil, fill up oil as necessary on top of that. As a standard, we do have our cover along the top. And as we start to move along the side, we've got our turbo casing, our battery, easy access to a number of different things. So if you ever do need to boost, it's very, very straightforward in order to be able to do that. But I love the clean simpleness of this engine bay. Look at this. Couple other things that are gonna be standard on the Badlands edition of the vehicle. We've got our tow hooks, which are gonna be available on both sides. We also have the front facing camera. So really, really beneficial if you're going over different types of terrain. And we do have a little washer nozzle along the top there as well to make sure that it stays nice and clean. Now, one other thing to point out inside of the Bronco, so as we look underneath, you can just kind of make it out there. But as you can see there, we have a number of scuff plates that are available inside of the Badlands edition of the vehicle. So absolutely useful if you're going to be taking this thing off-roading. Now, there are some really cool things about this thing when you get into the 4x4 mode and different drive modes that are available. We'll get to that one in just a second. Now, one other thing to point out about the Bronco Sport is that along the top there, look at this thing for a second. So it's got a really, really beautiful top to it, but one of the big benefits of having it set up like this is that there are some really, really cool accessories that are coming for this thing. You're gonna have the ability to have a tent that you can literally sleep on top of this vehicle. So truly an off-road, a completely rugged type of a vehicle. So really, really neat what's planned and what's coming for this thing. Now there are a few different ways that we can get into the trunk of this thing, way number one. So if we take a look there at the very bottom, we've got our trunk release button. So we can double click that in order to unlock. Now. There is not an option for a power lift gate inside of the Bronco Sport. It is a manual process, but unlock from the fob lets us open this thing up. But 
one of the exciting things about the Bronco Sport is not only can you open up the entire lift gate, you've also now got the option. So looking on the door there, we've got two options. We've got one to open up the door so we can unlock it from the fob. We can unlock it from there, absolutely. But get this, along the left-hand side, there's a little one for glass release. We press the glass release and all of a sudden, We've now got the ability to throw in some extra things. If you've got wood, things like that that you need to transport. We finally do have this back inside of that Ford vehicle. So absolutely love that fact. Okay, now taking a peek in the back of this vehicle. So we do have quite a little bit of storage space. Now this cargo cover is going to be standard inside of the Bronco Sport. Looking underneath, we do have our full size spare tire. Now, one of the benefits of having that full-size spare tire inside of the back of the vehicle is if you're using it for off-road purposes, what happens if you to pop a tire? A mini spare is unfortunately not going to cut it. So I love the fact that they've included a full-size spare inside of this vehicle. Now, there is a little bit of standard technology in the back of this thing. So as you can see, just along the side, we do have some clips if we ever need to put in a cargo net. So it's going to be the same for both sides. And we've also got a 12 volt adapter. So just a regular cigarette lighter adapter, as well as our built in inverter. So if we need to plug in a traditional wall outlet, we've got the capabilities to do that. Now, one little Easter egg along the back, we can just kind of make it out there. But you see that little Bronco logo. So really, really nice that the engineers have included that. Along the opposite side, we've also got a little light button, but wait a minute, there's no cabin lights in the back here. What happens? There's nothing in the top there. Now, one of the nice things about the Bronco Sport is that we do have these little guys. So repositionable lights on both sides. We've got one on the driver's side and along the passenger side. So by pressing this light button again, watch what happens. So really, really beneficial to have some lighting that we can all of a sudden move if we're gonna be loading the vehicle up later on at night. We do have a little bottle opener positioned along the side in the back here. Let's take a peek at the Bronco Sport sizing in the back. So this is with the second row up. So we're just getting access to the basic cargo area there. But as you can see, there is a ton of stuff that you can fit in the back of this thing. Now take a look at the cargo dimension difference when those seats are folded down in that middle row. It is a 60-40 split, so 60% driver, 40% passenger, which means that if you need four people in the vehicle, we can pull that driver's side up while still giving us enough space in order to be able to add some added cargo in there. Folding the seats down in the Bronco Sport Badlands is also a very straightforward process. So taking a look here, so we are in the back row. Now you do need to do this, it's a manual process, but if we take a look along the top, so we've got a button there on both the side as well as on the headrest. So what we're gonna do is press that headrest button first in order to be able to lower the headrest. From there, all we're gonna do is push this button we're just going to slide the seat forward. So really that simple. Now, when it comes to spacing inside of the Bronco Sport, so really, really straightforward, it doesn't feel much different space-wise than an Escape. So having said that, I've got a ton of space for my knees. I still have space for my feet. And up overhead, I've got a couple inches of head clearance as well. Now, one thing to note, this specific vehicle does not have the Badlands package, which would give us a little sunroof along the top. And when it comes down to the back row, there are a few things that we can point out. So along the side as you can see we do have our cup holders so we're just going to crank that down in order to have the cup holders open and back up to lock it into place as we start to move down so a couple things to point out we do have our fan control and then other piece of technology we do have is our inverter built into the back there as well so we've got the ability to plug one in the trunk as well as just across the center console stack another thing to point out is that the bronco sport does have these useful zippered pouches, and that's going to be along the driver and the passenger seat, both sides there. Outside of that, there's not too much else in this thing. We've got our basic window control, and then we've got our unlock and our lock button. So this is a little bit different. So if we take a look there at the unlock and the lock button, it feels a little bit different than what you might be used to in a Ford vehicle. Along the driver's side door, very straightforward along our top, we've got our unlock and our lock button. As we start to move down, we've got the ability to kick off power to those rear windows, as well as the control in order to be able to adjust the driver and passenger side view mirrors. Adjusting the driver's seat in the Bronco Sport is a very straightforward process. Along the side, so the left-hand side of the driver, the right-hand side of the passenger side, there's a few different levers. So along the driver's side, the very front lever is going to let us bring the seat forwards or backwards. We can lift it up or we can push it down to go all the way down. The second lever in the middle is going to be for our backrest. So that's going to let the backrest come forwards or backwards. And then the last one, little round one, is going to be for our lumbar support. That's going to help out, give us a little bit of extra stability for our lower back. 
Now adjusting the steering wheel in the Bronco Sport is also a very straightforward process. It is closer to our left knee, so as you see there, we've got a little lever. We're just going to crank that lever down and it's telescopic so we can slide the steering wheel in and out, up and down. Once you've got that perfect position, you're just going to take that lever, crank it back up into place, and you're set to go. Next up, looking just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel, we've got a few different buttons there. So this is going to be for the liftgate release, so we can open up the liftgate from inside the vehicle. We've also got a selector switch. That's going to let us select what's happening with our running lamps. So this one at the very top is going to be off. So that means our daytime or our nighttime running lamps won't come on whatsoever. I always recommend to keep it on this A setting, the auto setting. And the reason why is because it's automatically going to turn on the daytime or the nighttime running lamps, depending on how bright it is outside. This is the Sync 3 screen we're going to be met with from the vehicle when it's first started up. Now this one does have factory navigation, which is why we've got that map summary. So we've got our map as well as whatever radio stations currently playing, and we've also got the ability to look at our phone or add one in if it's not connected. Now if our phone was connected, this would show up with a different message. I'll show you that one in just a second. But let's start off with some basic settings. So starting off with our basic audio settings, we've got a couple different ways to change the sources. So we've got our AM, FM, Sirius XM, as well as our Bluetooth. If our phone was connected, it would also show up there as we move back we've got a couple different ways we can tune so we can tune by entering in a station there we've got the ability to use that rocker in order to change stations or we can press our voice command button on the steering wheel in order to be able to change stations as well if we want to save a preset all we're going to do is press and hold and as you can see there it saved that station directly as one of my presets as we start to move down, we've got our phone button. So phone, adding a phone is actually a really, really straightforward process. All we're going to do is press that add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Next up, you're going to want to make sure that on your cell phone that Bluetooth is turned on. So we're just going to turn Bluetooth on. We're going to give it a second, and as you can see there, so we've got sync that shows up. Unfortunately, it doesn't say Bronco like it has in the past for other Ford vehicles, but we're just going to connect there. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Okay, yeah, so we want to make sure that those pins match up, and they do, so we're going to hit yes on the screen and pair on our phone. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice-activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Excellent. So, as you can see there, it's also asking me if I want to if I want to allow my contacts and favorites to sync. Absolutely want to do that, so we're going to hit OK and select that. Now, we've also got the option for the automatic contact download. I absolutely recommend turning that one on, and we just hit Finish. So as we can see, we've got my recent calls, contacts, my phone, some basic settings. If you have multiple phones connected, you can change what phone you're running off of on Bluetooth. You can run Siri and a few other things. Now, as we go back to audio for a second there, and let's look at our sources. So as you can see there, we've got LiveX Live, which is a radio app that I've got installed on my phone. You'd also be able to find it under the app screen there. So if you have Spotify, things like that, you'd be able to play those apps directly through the middle screen. Really, really cool. In order to be able to delete a phone, equally straightforward. We're just going to go to our settings, and from there, we're just going to select phone. And we've got a couple different options. So you can see we can view devices, look at different text messaging options, roaming warnings, etc. To delete the device, all we're going to do is select on the device. We can either disconnect or completely remove. Remove yes, and the phone is now completely disconnected. So it's really that simple. Using factory navigation is a straightforward process. So we've got the ability to either run off of factory navigation, or we can run off of Android Auto and Apple CarPlay to use Google Maps, Apple Maps, Waze, whatever the case may be. Running off of factory navigation, though, very straightforward. We're going to start off with search. So what we're going to do is search for an address there. So we've got the address of the dealership. We're just going to press that. And we can either save it as a favorite, or we can just start to directly begin our navigation. Obey traffic laws, be alert, and use voice commands while driving. Okay. Please proceed to the highlighted route and then the route guidance will start. So very straightforward there. If we want to cancel the route out, all we have to do is press the X button at the top in order to cancel. So as you can see there, route has now been canceled. Bringing our control screen back up, we've got a few different options now. We can move between different screen views. Navigation settings is the big one on this page. Looking at our map preferences. So we've got different options there. Breadcrumbs essentially is going to trace whatever routes you've taken. And then our point of interest icons. So if you want to find things like coffee shops, gas stations, etc., we'd turn this one on. Route preferences. Do you like the fastest route, shortest route, most eco-friendly route? You've got the ability to select it there. As we move down, we've got the ability to avoid freeways, toll roads, tunnels, and a number of other things. Whatever preferences you have set up there, it's going to dynamically update the map and the map route that you're taking in order to reflect that. 
Moving back, last one is going to be our navigation preferences. So different prompts, whether that's voice and tones, voice or strictly tones. And moving back, Next up, we've got the ability to look at our history. So if we've gone to different places, we can see where we've traveled to. We can look at our favorites, point of interest icons, and then the other two to highlight would be our home and our work address. By entering in an address here, we can press the voice button on the steering wheel, and that's going to automatically let us determine whether or not we're going to our home or to our work. And all we'd have to say is we'd press the voice button, say navigate home, and it'll take the address that we've saved in our home in order to be able to navigate us there. And that's going to be the basics of the navigation system. As we move into settings, tons of options there. So starting off with our sound settings, we've got the ability to change the treble mid-range bass and a number of other features. Basic clock settings, so we can go up or down an hour, we can go between AM or PM, or switch into that 24 hours, so that military time instead. Automatic daylight savings time. What that's going to do is it's automatically going to flip us between, well, it's going to spring us forward or fall us back an hour, just depending on the time of year. And then the auto time zone update, if we are traveling across the country, east to west coast, west to east, whatever the case may be, this will automatically update the time as we start to move into different time zones. Bluetooth, we can turn Bluetooth off completely or we can add another device in. So a Bluetooth enabled MP3 player, cell phone, whatever the case may be basic phone Search settings your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found so that's where we would go to enter in a phone or to add a phone we've also got the ability to do it down on the bottom of the screen moving into radio so this one is actually a dynamic button just based off of whether you're on am fm or your sirius xm so as you can see there we've got the ability to select preset pages i always recommend having that at six because that's going to give us up to 30 individual presets but watch what happens when we go from am fm into sirius Let's go to our settings for a second there. We've now got some basic Sirius XM settings. So we can go to different category seeking, parental lockouts, and we've got a number of other options there. So really, really neat, especially if you're more of a heavy Sirius XM user. Moving back into our regular AM FM, as you can see, we've got our basic radio settings instead. Driver assistance, that's when we get into a lot of other options. So we've got our basic cruise control setting, which works actually technically three different ways. So our regular cruise control, which would be more like that old school cruise control. We've got our adaptive. So the adaptive essentially is that set it and forget it cruise. So let's say if you set it at 120 on the highway, if the car in front of you breaks, yours will automatically break. If it speeds up or get out of the way, yours will pick back up to speed. Intelligent takes the adaptive to the next level. So you, it's all based off of a tolerance. So let's say if you've got a 10 kilometer or 10 mile per hour tolerance, if you're traveling at 100, the car and then all of a sudden the vehicle recognizes that the speed drops from let's say 100 to 80, it's going to automatically brake for you to 90 kilometers an hour. So it's really, really neat the way that that system works. And from there, we've got our lane keeping system. That's going to work three different ways. Way number one is going to give you a little bit of a steering wheel shake. So that alert. So if we start to veer over without signaling, we'll get a little shake on our steering wheel. Second one is the aid. So if we start to veer over without signaling, the vehicle will actually take over and it'll recenter you automatically. When we get into the alert and the aid, it will do both. So it's going to give you a bit of a steering wheel shake and it'll recenter you back into your lane. Alert intensity is the intensity of that steering wheel shake. Is it going to be a low, medium, or a high shake? Pre-collision assist. So really, really neat. If the vehicle senses a potential collision, there are a few things that could potentially happen. Active braking. If it senses a potential collision, the vehicle will automatically brake for you. With evasive steering, if it can't brake in time, it's going to take over the steering wheel and then it'll get you out of the way in order to either avoid or minimize the impact of the collision and how sensitive is the system. Next up is our speed side recognition. So really, really neat. There is the speed sign on the actual steering, on the, in the steering column there. But what happens is if we start to go a little bit faster, we can get a speed warning and then the tolerance for, is it five kilometers, 10 kilometers an hour over before we get that speed warning. Rear view camera, which is very straightforward. And then our blind spot system. So our blind spot system lets us know if anybody's under the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. And what'll actually happen there is, All right, rear view camera, very straightforward. Now our blind spot system. If we were to have somebody enter the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, we'd get a little nod, so as you can see there, so that's going to highlight orange. That's going to let us know that somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle. So let's make sure that that system's turned back on. And the trailer sway control. If the vehicle senses that there's potential trailer sway, what it's going to do is it's going to automatically apply braking to the engine in order to maybe be able to control that trailer sway. 
cross traffic alert if vehicles are coming perpendicular so the left or right side and you don't well right, whether you see it or not with this setting turned on the vehicle is going to warn you of a potential collision from there we've got our driver alert which is tied into the lane keeping system so if we get too many alerts letting us know then it will tell us that we should probably take a break as we start to move in, we've got a few other controls and a well, number of other controls and options, I should say, moving into some basic vehicle settings. This is where we're going to go to in order to change a few things. So how long is the vehicle going to idle for? Rear occupant alert. Really, really neat. Let's see how that works. And this is the rear occupancy alert that I was telling you about. So when the vehicle's turned off, this is the message we're going to see. So really, really beneficial. Again, as I mentioned, if you've got young kids, just as a reminder to make sure you check that back seat. So really, really cool. I love the fact that Ford's included this system. Next up is going to be the My Key system, which the My Key is going to let you set up certain limitations for an individual key fob. Where that comes into play is, let's say if you're giving the vehicle out to a child to use, or you want to play a prank on a spouse, you can set it so that a key fob can only go up to certain, will give you certain limitations. So maybe you can't go faster than 100 kilometers an hour. The radio won't play unless the seatbelt's plugged in. So lots of different options there. We've got a remote start setup. So whether or not remote start is even a thing, you've got the ability to remote start directly through the key fob or through your cell phone. We can turn that system on or off. When you remote start, what happens? Is it automatically going to let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be? Or is it going to be based off of your last settings? Your seats, if your heated seats were on, will it automatically do that? And then the duration of the remote start, will it last for five, 10 or 15 minutes? As we start to move down, we've got the ability to look at our windows, so remote open and close. Let's jump outside to see how that works. In order to use the key fob to roll the windows down very straightforward, all we're going to do is press the unlock button twice. On the second press, we're going to hold it. So, one, two, and hold. As you can see, windows down across the board, really, really straightforward. In order to roll them back up again, we're just going to press the lock button twice, and same thing. That second press, you're going to hold. So, one, two, and hold. As you can see, windows back up. So really, really cool feature. From there, we've got our wiper settings now. So wipers, few different settings. They are rain sensing wipers in the Badlands edition. So we can turn that rain sensing wiper off if we want to. Rear wiper on when in reverse. What I recommend there is keeping that one on because if your front windshield wiper is going and you back up, it's automatically going to turn on that rear wiper for you as well. Basic vehicle lighting, we've got our auto high beam settings, so I do recommend keeping that one on. And the reason why is because the vehicle is automatically going to turn on the high beams for you. And then if it starts to recognize that there's an oncoming vehicle, it'll automatically dim them before turning them off completely. Auto lamp delay is when we go to lock the vehicle, how long do those lights stay on for? Basics about the lock itself. So we've got a couple different options there. So we've got our auto unlock, miss lock, chirp, etc. I do recommend keeping these things all standard. The one you might want to tweak is remote unlock. So when we unlock the vehicle, do all doors got unlocked or is it just the driver's door? So really a matter of preference and safety. And then last one is going to be our intelligent access. Same thing. Keep that one on. Big thing there is with some of these features set up, it's automatically going to lock the doors if the car's on and you leave with the fob in your pocket. So really, really beneficial there. So let's keep all of those settings as a default. As we move into Ford Pass Connect, so you do have the ability to use the vehicle as a wireless hotspot. You do need a data plan through a third party in order to be able to do that, but it's good for up to 10 devices. So really, really useful. Now, Ford Pass Connect, the vehicle, as I mentioned, so it does have a built-in modem. So you can remote start the vehicle for your, through your fob, but with that built-in modem, it also gives you the ability to remote start directly through your cell phone. So a really, really cool fact there. Moving into some general settings. We've got different language settings, so English, Spanish, or French, Celsius or Fahrenheit, kilometers per no, kilometers and liters per hundred or miles per gallon, the tire pressure, touchscreen beep. So the touchscreen beep is that beep. So if you're not a fan of it, you can turn that off. Automatic system updates. I absolutely recommend making sure you turn these ones on. Be connected to Wi-Fi at home. And the reason why is because it's automatically going to update the vehicle software when that automatic system updates is turned on. And if for whatever reason the vehicle's given you any issues, either with the Sync 3 system, with Ford Pass, or any other things, just do a master reset or a Ford Pass reset to bring it back to your factory defaults. 
From there, we've got a couple other options. We've got the ability to easily connect to Wi-Fi. And as I mentioned, make sure that those two are turned on in tandem. 911 Assist, really, really useful feature. Make sure you have this one turned on. And the reason why is because with it turned on and your cell phone connected, if you're in a collision, the phone will automatically dial 911 for you. And the vehicle will contact and talk to the 911 operator. So really, really cool feature. Mobile apps, we've got a couple different options there, and there are some apps that will work through USB or just over Bluetooth. Moving into our display, so we've got a nice beautiful display, but if you find it's a little bit too busy, a little bit too distracting, we can turn the display off. So we've got the display off, press the button in, or press the screen in order to turn it back to life, and we've also got a calming screen. Now a couple other things, we've got some the ability to change some display settings. So if we press display off, it just kills off the display. Touching the screen will bring it back to life. If you just want more of a calming screen, we've got the ability to do that. So we've got the time and the date. Press again in order to bring that back to life. Moving back into our display, we can change the background image, the brightness, as well as the mode. So we can change between our auto, daytime, or nighttime mode. So auto is automatically going to flip us between day or nighttime, but I personally love the look of the nighttime mode because I love blue, but again, really a matter of preference there, whether or not you go between the auto setting or and let the vehicle determine if it's going to be the bright or that blue setting instead, again, based off of how bright it is outside. And as we go back, a couple other options. We've got our voice control. So as you can see there, we've got a few different options, but I want you to listen to something for a second. So advanced mode currently turned off. Let's press the voice command button. 94.9. Tuning to FM 94.9. Okay, so it's changed radio stations, so it's tuned it out to a different station, and it gave us a message letting us know that. Now, if we turn advanced mode on, let's try that again. 97.7. Nothing. But look at what happened. It did change the station. So with the advanced mode on, that just means that we're not going to get quite as many prompts. As we get into our phone confirmation, so if we're making a phone call, do we want to connect with this person? Yes or no? And then we've got our voice command list. So our voice command list is this little list that comes up when we press that voice button on the steering wheel. Can cancel out of that screen easily and jumping back last one is going to be our valet mode so valet mode we do have the option of locking the screen out by entering in a four digit number don't use zero 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 do something a little bit more challenging but as you can see there we physically can't press the screen at all and the reason why is because we've locked it out so really useful if you've got a valet parking the vehicle enter that four digit code in order to be able to unlock it again last one is going to be our navigation settings which we've already gone through when we went through the basic nav down there Step number one, what we're going to do is make sure that we take our USB cable and all we're going to do is enter it into any of the available USB ports. Step number one, really, really straightforward. From there, all we're going to do is take that USB cable and we're just going to insert it into our phone and watch what happens. So phone is on there, but we've now got an Apple CarPlay message. So CarPlay lets you use your phone in a way, et cetera. We're just going to hit continue there. And in order to use CarPlay, we have to make sure that we agree to this. So we're agreed and just a second there so unlock in order to be able to start carplay so on your phone just enter in your number you can use your face id fingerprint unlock whatever the case may be but as you can see there we now have my phone mirrored so it's really that simple another message popped up there asking me that if i want to allow carplay to go while my phone is locked we absolutely want to allow that and this is the basic so really really neat we do have the option through the phone in order to be able to change that around as you can see we can look at my phone music we can go through google maps we can look at my messages we've got my podcasts and a number of other things so live x live we can play through that as well pressing this button on the bottom left is going to act as the home button on your phone so we can go back to the home screen from there if we ever need to get back to the actual home screen of sync 3 we're just going to press this ford sync button and that brings us back to the default there and as you can see we've got my phone maps and CarPlay again. So if we hit Maps for a second there, we do have factory navigation, but if you prefer Apple Maps, Google Maps, or Waze, you've got the capabilities to do that. Jumping back home again will bring us back to the home screen. So really, really neat. Now, one thing may happen is maybe you want to be able to physically charge your phone because you don't have a wireless charging pad available, but you still do need to make sure that you're using the regular system. So in order to make sure that that happens, all we're going to do, go to Settings. We've got Apple CarPlay. 
and we're just going to turn Apple CarPlay off. So as you can see there, it's now defaulted back to the factory defaults, while at the same time, my phone is still actively charging. So really, really beneficial there. I'm still physically connected, connected over Bluetooth, but we can run off of the factory navigation instead of running off of my cell phone. So really, really straightforward. And then all we have to do in order to remove CarPlay, we can remove my phone. Yes. As you can see there, CarPlay is now completely gone, and then just disconnect from there. Setting up Android Auto is a very similar process. All we're going to do is make sure that we've got our USB cable. We're just going to insert it into the bottom of our phone and give it a second there. There we go. So we've got an Android Auto message. So it's going to extend the Android platform, very similar to what we just saw in Apple CarPlay. We're just going to hit continue. And then we've got some basic terms and conditions. So again, we do have to make sure that we connect and we agree with that in order to be able to use Android Auto. Now it's asking me for some more information on the phone. So welcome to Android Auto. We need to unlock the phone in order for it to work. So phone is unlocked. So let's unlock to continue. And just a second there. So, oh, wait, what? And we're connected. Really that simple on Android Auto. It's amazing how quick this thing is. We're now fully paired and on the phone, it's now asking me to allow access to my messages, which yeah, let's go for it. Let's make sure that we're fully connected there. Automatically download our contacts. Yes, we want that to happen as well. So as you can see there, we've got Android Auto now installed. So very straightforward. We've got the Waze app. We've got Google Maps. We've got my podcast, phone, calendars, news alerts, reminders, all sorts of things. So very, very neat. You can still use the Google Assistant there. You can press that. You can press the button on the steering wheel in order to make it happen. You can choose Waze if you prefer Waze. You can choose Google Maps if you prefer Google Maps. It's really a matter of preference there. Now you can use Waze if you want to. You can use Google Maps if you want to. Really a matter of preference what map application you use. Very straightforward. All we would do is search for an address in order to be able to use it. Maybe you just want to use regular built-in navigation instead. Very, very straightforward. Very similar to what we saw in Android or Apple CarPlay. We're just going to press the exit button there. And we're just going to search for Android Auto. And as you can see at the very bottom though, so now it's got us in Maps or we're jumping back into Android Auto. So we can either completely remove my phone, we can turn off Android Auto completely, which is then going to default us back to factory navigation, while at the same time making sure that the phone is still charging. In order to remove the phone, all we're going to do is literally do that. Remove Galaxy, yes. And the phone is now gone. It's no longer connected, but I'm still charging, which is really, really cool. Unplug and you're set to go. Hey, now as we start to move down the screen, so a couple things to point out, we've got our volume rocker. It's going to let us adjust the volume or we can turn the audio system off completely by pressing the button in. Along the top, we've got our auto start stop. So that's the one that's potentially going to kill power to the engine when we're stopped for an extended period of time. We can turn on our four ways and then we've also got that front facing camera. So by pressing that camera button, and then as you see along the top, we've also got some other buttons. So we've got just a single basic view or a front 180 degree view. So really, really useful if you're navigating through slightly challenging terrain, and then press the camera button again in order to bring us back to that home screen. Along the bottom, we've got the ability to adjust some basic audio sound settings. So a hot key there, pressing the button again to get rid of it. We can change between active radio stations or songs, play pause. And then we've also got the ability to either go to our calming screen or turn off the power to the screen completely. One more time to bring it back to life. Along the right hand side, we've got the ability to manually tune. As we start to move down, a few things to point out. We've got our fan control along the side. Along the right side, we've got the ability to select what's happening with our climate, turning it off completely, rear window defroster, max windshield defroster, whether the fan's blowing to the windshield, face or feet, or air circulation, which I just noticed they actually have it a boxier style, almost like the Bronco look, that's pretty cool. Our air conditioning button, auto, let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be, our max air conditioning, and then we've also got our heated seats. As we start to move down some standard technology, we've got our USB and our USB-C, as well as our traditional cigarette lighter adapter. A little bit of storage space, super useful, especially if you've got your phone, you've got the capabilities to toss it down there, up along the top, whatever the case may be. And as we start to move down, so a few things to point out, we've got our park reverse neutral drive or our M, so our manual mode. So the vehicle is equipped with our paddle shifters along the steering wheel. So we've got our minus and our plus buttons that let us change what gear we're in. And as we start to move down, we've got our parking brake, our auto hold setting, auto hold. If that setting's turned on and we're stopped at a light, if we're stopped, we take our foot off the brake, it's going to hold us into place. From there, we've got our terrain descent control. We've got a few other traction control options. 
From there, we've got our different goat modes. We've got seven different modes. Let's do a quick flip to see what happens. So basic, uh, let's move in a little bit more. There we go, okay. So basic settings there. So we've got our normal, eco, sport, slippery. Back along the other way, we've got our mud ruts, as well as our sand and our rock crawl mode. So a couple of the other ones that you may not be familiar with if you've never owned a Ford before are gonna be mud ruts, as well as our rock crawl. So if we look at the mud ruts for a second there, what that's going to do is it's going to give you, it's essentially an off-road mode, which is going to automatically engage that 4x4 lock. When we get into the far side there, when we move into our rock crawl mode, that's going to give us the 4x4 lock, but it's also going to lock the rear differential. So really, really beneficial there. I'm actually going to put together another video that explains the different goat modes inside of this vehicle. Next up, let's take a peek and learn all about the features of the steering wheel. So starting off on our left-hand side, the vehicle is equipped with our adaptive cruise control system. So this first button along the top is going to be our distance indicator. So that's going to let us know how close or how far away we are from the vehicle that's in front of us. This next one is going to be the ability to either set, increase or decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. Next one there is going to be for our lane centering system. So the lane keeping system is going to be on the left stick. The lane centering is the one that's going to automatically pull you into your lane. And you know that that system's activated when we see this little message. So when we see these little guys, I should say, those bowling lanes. So that lets us know that the system is currently turned on. Now the system itself doesn't actually activate until we hit about 60 kilometers an hour. As we start to move down a little bit more, we've got another button. Now this one's going to be the actual lane centering system. And then we've got the ability to exit our speed. Along the very bottom, we can either decrease or increase our volume, or we can completely mute along the right hand side there so this is going to be the basics in order to be able to navigate through this middle screen so a couple things to point out there actually i'm in the off-road rock crawl there so let's go back just to our normal setting there for us actually let's, yeah let's go normal setting for a second there and just look at how beautiful that looks as we go between our different settings love the fact that ford's really incorporating these visuals and by the way i love this bronco logo it's everywhere love this thing but as we start to move down the steering wheel so a couple things to point out we've got our basic back button we've got our up and down button as well as our menu button so let's see how these things work specifically on this middle screen so as we start to go up and down we can switch between different screens in order to be able to reset our default. So fuel economy, all we're going to do is press and hold the OK button for a few seconds there and it's zeroed us back out again. And as we can see, we've got the ability to press our menu in order to either look at different settings or change our setup. So basic settings on this screen are our oil life or we can also have our miles per hour for the speed that now show up there. So miles per hour, kilometers per hour. Going back, and as we move down, so we've got our basic trip counter, same thing. We can press and hold in order to reset our trip counter. Zero does back out. Pressing the menu button gives us the ability to change certain things. So same thing. So we're going to go our display setup there. And it gives us that one option. As we start to move down, we've got our tire pressure sensitivity, whatever radio station's currently playing. As we start to move down, as you can see there, we've got our ability to change between either radio stations or songs. We can hang up on a phone call or we can answer a phone call. Last button is going to be our voice activated button down there. And that's going to let us either change radio stations, we can make a phone call, or we can even navigate to certain places by pressing this voice command prompt. Now, one other thing to point out, this thing does have the paddle shifter. So that minus and plus button, you do need to be in the manual mode. So to switch to that, we're just going to hit the drive mode and press that M button there. And then switch back out to park from there in order to park the vehicle again. And we can change whatever gear we're in by pressing those buttons. Our left stick, by pulling in, that's going to give us the ability to flip our high beams on if we want to. We have auto high beams on, or auto lamps on right now, I should say, which is why there's no high beam lock. If you want the high beam lock, all we have to do is make sure that we turn this into an on setting instead. And then we've got the ability to flick in order to keep our high beams permanently on. And flick back to the auto setting from there. And a couple other things to point out, just along that left stick, the very end of it, as you can see there, we've got a button that's going to be for our lane keeping system. So we can turn that lane keeping system on or off. On our right stick, so this one is equipped with rain sensing wipers, which means this little guy is going to determine how sensitive it is to rain that's hitting the windshield. On top of that, as you can see on the very end of it, we've got the ability to control our rear wiper from there. We can turn that on or off. Now pulling towards us is going to be good for our front windshield. And then pushing the stick away is going to be for our back wiper. So let's flip to the back for a sec. So very straightforward there. 
And that's going to be the basics of the steering wheel for the Bronco Sport. And as we start to move up overhead, now a couple things to point out. So as you can see there, we do have our mirrors there. Hello, with our lights, which is really, really nice. And we can pop this guy off and one, two, three, extend. Oh yeah, bet you didn't know that most of these things could do that. And <laughs> slide it back into place in order to lock it back in. Now, as we start to go up overhead, we do have our sunglasses holder. And we've also got the ability to turn our cabin lights on or off. Now, one thing to point out, this one does not have the Badlands package, which means we do not have a sunroof. If there was a sunroof, it would be just a little guy along the top there, and you'd have your controls just along the side. Well, folks, that was a look at the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport Badlands Edition. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you were able to learn a couple things. If you have any questions, make sure you drop them down below. And if you have an idea for a future video, feel free to let me know, and I'll give you a shout out in the upcoming video. But until I see you guys next time, make sure you stay safe.